Hi, everybody. Uh, I am Marion. I work at WHO within the Colorado program. So you have a couple of my colleagues sitting with you today. I think I've met quite a lot of you too. I'm also the focal point of the, of the GTFCC secretariat. So I'm sorry not to be around today. I had to cancel my in-person participation, but I'm hoping to see most of you um, in Les Pensières a bit later in, in June for the, for the annual meeting. So today, and I'll try not to repeat any of the things that have been said, but there have been a lot of things discussed already since the start uh, earlier this morning. So for today's main objective of this session, and I think, uh, Mathieu, we can move to the next slides that we present, prepare yeah, the structure of the session. So this session aims to be at like both a presentation of the state of, of play, discussing a bit uh, where we stand today, in terms of uh, uh, priority areas identification, but also in terms of NCP's development, but also, and most importantly, to have a part of this session to use it as a discussion forum, a brainstorming exercise. So I really do hope we can have something interactive and I will need the help of my colleagues in the room because of course I can't really see the room from where I am. So the main objective of the session, as you can see on the slide, is to, to highlight and discuss how we coordinate efforts and how we plan towards the global roadmap uh, uh, targets with a focus more specifically for this session on the coming 12 months. So I've tried to put on these slides um, the expected outcomes and how we're going to organize the, the, the discussion today to try to reach these outcomes. So basically, I've identified four main outcomes. The idea for this session is to be able, is for me first to share with you on behalf of, of our extended secretariat team, to share a global picture of the state of play in terms of both PAMI, so priority areas, identification, and NCP development so far as of today with information we have. Second expected outcome is to discuss uh, with the audience here and online planning for priority areas identification within the 12 COVID months. So here I will call on both countries and partners sitting in the room to, uh, uh, to discuss and try to gather and build the landscape of where we, what are basically the plans for the 12 coming months with an idea to be able to better coordinate and also for countries to have a better picture in terms of who could support which exercise and where. Third outcome is use that time today to discuss potential bottlenecks, challenges faced by countries to engage and launch uh, PAMI identification and I would also like to link this part, not only to the priority areas identification, but also to link it with one, one point that was discussed earlier, uh, earlier today, which is how do we then move from that exercise to declining it? So identifying basically the set of priority activities that have to be implemented uh, uh, and first identified in those areas, so in terms of basically contribution from each pillar to the NCP development based on the work that is being done uh, uh, when, the, when the priority areas have, have been defined. And the final outcome is to discuss, to use this forum, to discuss with you and gather a few of your thoughts and ideas regarding what we could call a GTFCC review process. And I'll just leave it there for this introductory side on this piece because it requires a bit more introduction for you to, to, to properly get what, I, what, I, what I'm flagging here. But these basically are the, are, are the main outcomes. So in the way we're going to structure that, I'll just start with the highlight of where we stand as of today in terms of PAMIs and, 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 and NCP, NCP development uh, uh, targets, basically. I'll root that very quickly because it has been very well explained this morning by Denis, but also reminded by Elizabeth and other, and other colleagues, the link, of course, with the global roadmap targets, because here we are focusing a lot, of course, on PAMI with purpose, but all of this is done with the final objective of having entities developed. 
and of course, obviously, with having cholera strategy implemented at a multi-sectoral level in countries. And then we'll move to this discussion part in which we have identified with the colleagues who, who are leading on the preparation of this meeting, uh, three uh, uh, main topics for discussion. So I think I'll just move to the, to the, to the first point. Uh, Mathieu, if we can move to the next slide. Yeah, thank you. So here, the, I'm not going to spend a lot of time here, just because I don't want to remind things that have that everybody normally knows, especially considering how committed all of you are in 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 this fight against the disease. But I just wanted again to basically reput and reroute this discussion in by reminding everybody the ultimate targets we have committed to achieve when uh, we developed and then endorsed um, the roadmap. We have heard from almost all the panelists, I think, since this morning, how the identification of PAMI fits at the very beginning of the strategy. So now I think what I, what I put in this slide is just to highlight once again, if you look at the three axes that are the core axes of the, our, our Kaira strategy, the second one is precisely indicating that we will achieve our goals of a better control and ultimately the, ultimately the elimination of cholera by implementing a targeted prevention, prevention strategy in cholera hotspot. What I've put on the, on the side is a table of the monitor that is basically presenting the monitoring framework. This document is, it was taken out of the roadmap, accessible to everybody. But of course, very high level indicators, right? But this is also to explain where the PAMI's identification process, we meant, I think someone used the term of cornerstone that for me is re representing perfectly where we put it, because without that, there is nothing that can be achieved in terms of all of these indicators that we have appearing on, 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 on the screen. But I just wanted to remind everybody that these targets are basically zoos we have committed to all of us as a global community, both countries, partners, donors, everybody. Um, so I what I'm gonna do now is is try to present where to, to present a global picture of the situation linked to these uh, 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 targets uh, objective. Um, and the idea is to present where we stand today in the efforts to move towards these goals, to also discuss and orientate and, and define how we can orientate our joint activities to either remove potential bottlenecks, but also to better respond to ongoing challenges that are faced by countries and preventing them potentially from engaging in the PAMI identification exercise. Uh, but also discuss today the linkage with the following steps, as I was mentioning a bit earlier. Um, first, I'm then going to try to go through a tough exercise, uh, trying to give a fair picture of where we stand today at global level with the information available at our level so far. So when I say at our level, at the secretariat level, in terms of priority areas identification, in terms of NCT developments, and I'll you, you're going to hear me repeat this disclaimer maybe three, four times during this presentation. But literally, the, the, well, the information that are being presented today are based on what we have, what we know. So I am really kindly asking everybody to please be lenient and make any necessary corrections, additions, changes needed to the information that is going to be presented now. And if we move to the next slide, Matteo, the next slide is basically an updated map of, yeah, okay. So this here aims at presenting the state of play in terms of priorities area identification. So I think I'll, I'll, I'll start to just explain one of the most important thing, have a look at the, at the, at the legend here. We are focusing and presenting countries that have identified priorities areas over the past five years. Zoos who have made this exercise 
before those five years, we have also indicated here countries who have not identified priority areas and in white, so any country with no color basically, it's because ZUD are not GTFCC target countries. When I mention GTFCC target countries, I'll, I'll, I'll be more precise as per the roadmap, because I know that with the global current situation, of course, we also have a few additional countries that are not part of this priority list, but that could be considered. So now that those kind of like precision have been shared, <clears throat> here, as you can see, um, so since 2018, we have had 23 countries that have developed uh, um, priority, that, that have identified priority areas using the GTFCC tool. So here, obviously, we're not talking of the methodology that is being public and, and being explained today. Uh, Although I really, really want to insist because I know some countries here may not appear in the list because they have been running similar exercises just before the, the either the, the hotspot at the, at the time it was called the hotspot methodology was developed or uh, because it's falling just before 2018. Uh, one comment on that, because on my slide, you can see that I've put 23 countries and I've also put plus Tanzania at the end, making it 24. Just explaining here out loud, it's just because Tanzania have performed the priority areas identification exercise just before the GTFCC first methodology was uh, out. So that's why I've made this kind of little tweak just to, to make sure that it was we were also being fair in terms of uh, of the countries involved in the exercise. I wanted to, to highlight that uh, this represents approximately 48% of the GTFCC target countries. Um, another figure, so based on, on, on the 47 slash 48 countries, because as you know, for some countries, it's always a bit tricky to know if, if, if it's like autonomous uh, 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 territories or not. So, I mean, my point is just to say, no matter the basis, it's 47 or 48 as per the, the roadmap priority uh, uh, countries. I wanted to highlight another thing, not included in this slide, but just for your global knowledge. Out of these uh, countries that have developed priority areas identification over the past, well, those past years, 61% are in the Afro region, 43% in Emro region, and 20% in Sierra region. Uh, yeah. I think uh, I'm just I'm just thinking to make sure that I've I've mentioned all of the remarks I wanted to 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 share with you. I think in terms of of basically uh, other flag I wanted to share. It's basically what do we take out of this map? Because it's one thing to just share those those figures and those numbers. I think for us it's a way to I would start by highlighting the huge efforts from countries because 23 countries is not nothing. And again, based on the information we have, it's a long process, as you know, all of you here, not an easy process. It also means there is still some progress to be made because not all of the GTFCC target countries, of course, are covered. I know that if we are more precise at what, than at what I am now, uh, 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 of course, there are level of urgency depending on the overall epidemiological situation of each country. But still, there are there are there is a bit of work that still has to be done in terms of engaging countries in this exercise. And I think we, as a global community, need to use all of our resources, both countries, partners, everybody, really, to try to see how we can we can engage those countries who have not been uh, uh, committing to this exercise uh, uh, so far. And this, for me, is a topic that will be covered in a way in the second part. Of the of the of this session, so in the discussion parts, um, I think I'll move to an update on the NCP because, of course, as I was mentioning in my kind of introductory remarks, it's not about uh, 
identifying priority areas mm -hmm. just for the purpose of identifying priority areas. Again, as we mentioned, it's because also zoos areas will be the primary targets of multisectoral intervention uh, uh, to then, well, that are basically the core uh, 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 the, the heart of the of the cholera strategies. So all of this is ha, is feeding the overall NCP development process. And so on. In the next slide, we have worked on a similar map, uh, but this time presenting where we are standing in terms of NCP development. And we have done that also to just link both exercises what is being done at the hotspot level, what is being done at the NCP development level, level. So of course, the identification of PAMI is necessary critical stage. It's, it is only one step. The final product is the NCP. That being said, I'll, I'll be even more precise than that. The most important thing is not the development of the NCP itself. It's of course the overall process of de developing and then implementing this multi-sectoral strategy and, and have all of the stakeholders uh, uh, sitting around the table and, and, and agreeing on, on those next steps. So here I'll share the same disclaimer as what I've done for the, for the, for the previous map on, 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 on priority areas. I'll also start with an explanation of the legend because you can have plenty of different maps representing where we stand in terms of NCP development depending also on what you take as a definition for an NCP. So here we are really uh, talking of, um, of post-roadmap finalized NCP. So again, there are countries who have, who, who have had cholera plans for a long time, not necessarily what we could say as aligned with the roadmap first because the roadmap was launched in 2017 and the different tools being refined over time. So here again, the filter we have used for this specific map is to think in terms of like pre and post roadmap. So, so far we have uh, eight countries with a post roadmap finalized NCP. And again, if I forgot, if we forgot any of them, you will have, you can either put something in the chat or get in touch. I have, we have included in, on the slide, the GTFCC Secretariat address. So, so far, Bangladesh, Ethiopia, Kenya, Sierra Leone, Somalia, Zambia, Zanzibar, and Zimbabwe have a finalized NCP. Now, I'll go into a, a, a precision right now. We have a lot of countries currently being engaged in developing uh, or revising NCPs. So, of course, it does not mean that those countries had nothing and I've just engaged now in an NCP process. I'll take the example of our colleagues from, from DRC and I'm, I think Dr. Placid in the room. DRC is currently uh, uh, going through an extensive uh, uh, pro process and actually they are finalizing and almost launching uh, uh, their revised NCP. And of course they used to have one uh, uh, before. So again, just trying to explain here are the filters we, we've used, we, we've used and, and, and yeah, how we build that map. So among the certain countries with ongoing rev revision or development of an NCP, we have Bena, Benin, sorry, Burundi, Cameroon, DRC, Mali, Mozambique, Niger, Nigeria, Senegal, South Sudan, Sudan, Tanzania, and Yemen. Um, I also, I wanted to flag two things. Over the past, I think, two years, and otherwise I hope my colleagues uh, uh, will correct me from my team, but we have really seen an increase. So for instance, over the, over the past year and a half, over the past two years, we have the number of countries with finalized NCP has moved from four to eight. Kenya and Ethiopia have gone through the complete IAP process. Their, their plans have been endorsed. Uh, uh, Zimbabwe also has submitted to the, to the IRP. Bena has submitted its, its document to the IRP. And we have quite a lot of other countries in very low stage, final stage. Ni Nigeria is, is currently revising its documents. And we do hope to have it finalized by the end of the year. I don't know if some of their representatives are in the room. Otherwise, they will be able to say that better than me. 
So I, <clears throat> I won't go into all of the details. I know that Burundi also has made quite a lot of, a lot of work. And again, here, highlighting the information that we managed to get at the GTSC secret secretariat level. So I will just end with this, with this, um, with this slide uh, by highlighting one thing. Out of the 23 countries, 23, 24 countries that have conducted a priority areas mapping since 2018, or close to 2018, so the one that we flagged in the slide just before, 20 have developed or are currently developing an NCP. So this is interesting because it means that um, the development of an NCP is, of course, a long process. PAMIS identification is the first phase. And so far, we see that since the launch of the roadmap, there have been a lot of progress being made. Still, some good roads to 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 go through, um, but I think it's 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 giving also a good flavor of all of the massive work that is being developed despite the current challenging difficulties and 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 recurring outbreaks that we see happening in 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 the world. For the second part, I, I, I'm going to pause because I, I understand that you may potentially have questions on Zoom slides. So I suggest that before I move to the discussion part, I pause, but I just wanted to finish on one point. For me, now, this is really the global picture. And I think now we also want to highlight all of the and to link all of this work and this kind of status of, of where we are in terms of assessing progress and moving towards what is one of the first steps to reach the target of, of 2030 and link that with all of the other hard tasks that are, are requested to have an NCP developed, uh, including what it requires for, in terms of collaboration with other, with other pillars. Uh, and and we, will, we will touch base on those topics during the, um, the discussion part. Um, and of course, Countries partner represented here today can share much more than what I say and, and very likely say better than me. So I don't know, may I just stop for a few seconds in, 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 in case there are questions on those slides before we move to the discussion parts? I'm looking at my YouTube screen and try to see if I see any hand, but I don't really see, to be honest. Wait, I'm making it bigger. No, okay. No, Marimé, if we can see hands in the room, but at the moment I can see no. Okay. Perfect. Then I just I can just move forward, and I, 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 we can have that in the second part too. Okay, excellent. So now we'll move to the more like dynamic and interactive part of the session. Um, yes. So. We have identified three kind of key axes we wanted to discuss and propose for discussion today uh, in in this meeting. It's really like to to guide the discussion, but then we'll see if there are some topics that take more time than others or gather more interest than others. I'll start with the first axis. So the first axis is basically to focus on perspectives and identify next steps for the coming twelve months. So. <clears throat> we have just discussed the assessing progress, basically, and reporting on, on, on how we move forward closer and what has to be done to reach the 2030 targets. Um, I think what we want to do now is try to discuss and get a, an idea from the audience online and, and, and in the room of what is being planned for the coming 12 months, both at country level, but also at, through and via a partner's lens in terms of plant support. As you know, and I think it was mentioned in some of the questions raised earlier in, in the different sessions, there is a question and a challenge of information sharing and of coordinating efforts. There are many partners being involved in supporting countries in, in um, PAMI's exercise. And, and of course, with the new methodology being now shared and, and, and well, with the, with the final aim to be extensively used, uh, I'm guessing there, there will be other partners who will be ready to, to accompany uh, countries based on, of course, on, on requests from countries to, to perform this exercise. 
So my question, there are two, for me, I see two big questions and I would really love to hear from people uh, in the room. I would like first to maybe have some ID from any volunteer from country representatives sitting in the room in terms of potentially highlighting and sharing and sharing any updates. My question is easy. Are there countries that do plan to engage in, in either PAMI identification or PAMI revision within the coming the coming months? And second question to that is, is a bit similar. It's like it would be it's it's basically targeting partners to to get a sense of if there would be and feeling comfortable enough to share with any plan in terms of potential support to be provided or already planned with some of the countries and and the second and and, and the second phases of of these first axes will be and I'm mentioning that because for anyone who wants to take the floor now it can also be addressed in 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 your in your remarks I think what we are also wanting to discuss now is what is potentially preventing countries from engaging in in the PAMI exercise so I'm not sure if the room today we have only countries who have already been performing this exercise but in that case, it's also interesting because you could maybe share why and 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 the challenges or imagine what we could basically highlight to have more countries uh, engage in, in 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 this identification process. So I'll stop here and hope to see a few hands uh, raised uh, in in the audience. But really, I, we would really want to have this interactive time because it's going to also inform next steps. For, for for the working group, but also for the coordination efforts at our our level. Sure, we can have a volunteer somewhere. Is there a hand in the room? I'm trying to see, but yeah, okay, I can see someone there. Please go ahead. I, 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 please, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, in Lebanon, we have an outbreak last year, and you are expecting a new one this year. So I, I think that you are interested to uh, to to try this uh, model uh, uh, with the uh, uh, with the first guide that we have been presented today. So uh, we are volunteering to to the, to do the exercise. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for that. That's a uh, yeah, it, it it it's it's a very good point, and it's and it's well noted on on our side. I know that colleagues are are following up closely and very interested in in engaging in that. Morgan, do you see anyone else that I'm missing? I don't see anyone online actually. So it can be mixed, huh? I mean, also from partners. Yeah, sorry, there is a hand, right? Thank you very much. Uh, I'm from Zimbabwe. Isaac yes. Pierce is my name. I work in cholera response in my country. Uh, I, I think this is a new tool that we, we just introduced today. And um, I'm happy that we have uh, this new tool for us to use uh in identifying new hotspots because i've seen that uh, uh, we okay priority areas for interventions most sectoral priority area for interventions not hotspots so we 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 did map our hotspots uh, some few years back and uh, we have discovered that uh, the current outbreak that we are uh, having in zimbabwe the cases most of the cases have been reported from the non hotspots area. So having a tool that is easy to, to, to populate and have the new priority areas will be very, very important for, for us. Safe to say that uh, I don't think this tool will be good to use during the outbreaks as we respond to them mm -hmm. or uh, later. 
Because really, when you are now responding to the outbreak, you cannot use this tool now. People are prioritizing the response per se than the to see which one is the what spot was already you are responding to that. I think that's my my take into this. Thank you. Thank you so much. And 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 Zimbabwe is a good example because I know you you have had a an NCP plan developed for a bit of time and also a, an operational plan. And and of course there will be this question of 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 revising PAMIs that will that will come soon. So yeah, th thanks for, for this. I see that you are nodding. Would you like to expand a bit on this? Yes, I can. No. Uh... No, your, your point about, uh, you know, uh, trying to redefine, trying to redefine or to use that spot during an outbreak, I think does not make sense. I mean, you know, during an outbreak, the priority is to respond to the outbreak and to a certain level, <laughs> by definition, if you have an outbreak, it's an spot. So after it's, uh, you know, as you said, uh, and this is something which which is important to bear in mind. Even if you have a very good uh, strategy, NCP, you will develop, uh, you know, your your hotspots, uh, develop uh, multi-sectorial intervention into hotspot, and therefore it's very likely that if the situation deteriorates, you know, in the situation, then you will have cholera. In, in area where you have not invested. So it's not a failure of the strategy. In that regard, Uganda is a good example. I mean, you know, they, they have, uh, you know, for example, vaccinated a number of, you know, priority district. Uh, the last outbreak, the last two outbreaks took place in a place that were not on the top, top list. That does not mean that there is no potential. So your point is very valid. Uh, you know, it's after the outbreak that uh, things can be reviewed. Uh, to to integrate and to to assess whether this area, you know, was just a kind of incident, or if it's you know if there are some other factors that you know would justify to uh, to uh, to be included in the hotspot. So uh, it it will have uh, to be a dynamic process. Uh, it was mentioned today. I can't remember by who, but of course the objective is not to renew the hotspot every uh, every five minutes, huh? <laughs> but. Uh, the situation will change, uh, and uh, and of course there will be some need for adjustment. And you know, the, the, if the situation evolves, maybe one or two spot can be added uh, before having a, a completely uh, a renewed strategy. So a very agile strategy, but it's a very good point you raised. Mm -hmm. Are there any other inputs from the room? Yes, there is. Okay, merci beaucoup. Uh, je suis Monsieur Tante, uh, le point focal national choléra au Togo. Et par rapport effectivement à ce qu'elle vient de, pour, uh, de, de présenter, le Togo a eu quand même des défis. Et en termes de plan, nous avions un plan stratégique 2022-2024 qui est en cours. Et normalement, on devait élaborer le plan opérationnel annuel dans lequel on pouvait voir tous les aspects qu'elle venait de présenter tantôt. Et je pense qu'on n'a pas eu, on a manqué un peu de financement. Et puis les aspects d'évaluation du COVID, tout ça là, on a eu des difficultés là-dessus. Et ce que nous pensons, premièrement, nous avons eu aussi effectivement, le Togo a identifié les, les zones chaudes de choléra. Mm. Nous en avons 14 au total et nous comptons faire, on se préparait même, une réévaluation des risques en fonction de tout ce qui vient de se passer par rapport aux effets de COVID et un peu des constats à l'évaluation que nous avions eu. Donc, nous voulons faire une réévaluation des risques pour pouvoir peut-être voir s'il faut intégrer ou pas. Et c'est pour ça tantôt même quand on présentait le le cas du Mali, 
j'aurais pu constater que quand souvent les gens disent qu'il n'y a plus eu de cas de, de choléra ou bien il n'y en a jamais eu, mmh. est-ce que vraiment ils ont vu le niveau de notification des acteurs et parce que nous, on est en train, en, en train de venir ici, nous, on voyait même comment nous allons disséminer, intégrer le, le, les tests rapides du choléra dans les zones périphériques même mmh. pour permettre aux gens qui euh, notifient les cas de diarrhée grave, être, les tester au TDR, être sûr qu'au moins à l'état primaire, ce n'est pas euh, un, choléra, un cas de choléra. Parce que quand les gens disent « non, on n'a pas d'épidémie de, de, choléra, de choléra », on sait que sur environ 100, c'est à peine 10 ou plus seulement qui font le choléra. Est-ce que c'est parce qu'effectivement, il n'y a pas de choléra ou bien les gens ne le notifient pas Alors, et nous comptons encore reprendre notre euh, évaluation des, des zones pour voir, parce qu'il y a depuis 2016, nous avons eu des cas des de, de zones qui étaient vraiment plus à chaud qui ne notifie plus, est-ce que c'est l'insuffisance de notification aussi dans nos localités Et maintenant, euh, voir est-ce qu'il faut, avec cette année 2023, euh, essayer d'élaborer un plan opérationnel de 12 mois et euh, en 2024, alors reprendre le plan stratégique et pouvoir l'actualiser vraiment, aller avec une feuille de route beaucoup plus déterminée. Nous sommes tellement contents d'être ici par rapport aux outils qu'on nous a placés. Donc, dès que nous rentrons, nous allons reprendre ces exercices d'évaluation avec tous les outils qu'on venait de nous présenter dans la matinée et revoir alors comment déterminer les, les trucs et comment se pas se préparer pour le plan opérationnel annuel et en 2024 pour aller avec le plan stratégique renouvelé. Je vous remercie. Oui, effectivement, j'ajouterai un peu quelque chose. Nos difficultés, c'est souvent la plus financière et technique. Donc, euh, l'année passée, on était en France toujours dans le coin de cette réunion avec le choléra et, et le WASH. J'avais fait publiquement un plaidoyer, sûrement qui a été un peu attendu. La dernière fois, l'OMS nous a doté un peu de PDR, mais on ne l'avons pas trop encore fait de trucs parce que les TDR, en réalité, doivent partir au niveau périphérique chez nous pour permettre au cas de diarrhée d'être soumise à un, euh, un exercice de, de diagnostic pour être sûr que ce qui se passe effectivement sur le terrain n'est pas effectivement le choléra. Nous mmh. avons aussi d'autres défis que je ne vais pas peut-être... J'ai envoyé une présentation que peut-être, avec le temps, on va partager. Nous, le Togo, on a, eu tel, on a tellement de problèmes de, de diagnostic et en venant ici, on s'est dit qu'on va soumettre notre présentation à l'ensemble pour bénéficier des expériences d'appui technique, des conseils. Parce que Togo, on ne fait pas, nous ne faisons pas le, la PCR. Nous avions eu un appui pour, par un projet de l'AMP de 2011 à 2015 qui nous a appuyé tellement. On a fait la PCR, on a fait nous les séquençailles, mais on, on envoyait les souches à l'extérieur. Et depuis que le projet est fini, nous avons des difficultés et on verra quand on va présenter qu'est-ce que vous pourrez nous donner comme appui. Et les séquençages, on n'en a pas, mais alors que heureusement, avec COVID, on a eu des appareils qui pouvaient être utilisés aussi pour les séquençages ou la PCR. Donc voilà les défis en termes de la voiture que le Togo vraiment compte et bénéficier des appuis techniques, conseils, tout à partir de cet atelier-là. Voilà, merci, nous, nous arrêtons là pour le moment. Merci beaucoup, M. Tante, pour, pour ça. Euh, je pense que c'est important et du coup, on prend bonne note de ce souhait d'éventuellement réévaluer un certain, un certain nombre de choses qui ont été définies euh, pourtant récemment, mais il y aurait un, un besoin à ce niveau-là. Je pense que c'était important de passer du temps là-dessus. I'm not sure if there are any other comments, as we have other, two other topics. Yeah, I see another hand, I think. It's more... Uh comment et question at the same time. Just for uh, Bangladesh, for the uh, work that we did in Bangladesh, it's true that we had a lot of questions about also the area that were close to another country or the river that were close to, that were shared uh, with other countries. And I really, uh, I found very interesting that in Sub-Saharan Africa, in Central Africa and in Southern Africa, 
a lot of countries have already done this PAMIS. And so I was just wondering if there was a platform or initiative to share between countries that have a, a common, um, mm. uh, that have common uh, yeah, areas, uh, border, uh, how to share the information, because we know that for outbreaks is quite key to understand also what is going on in, in the other countries. And so it's, yeah, it was just a question uh, how to share the information between the countries. So I think on this question, I mean, I guess you are you you are specifically referring because it could be a broader question, broader than just the 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 PAMIS is a PAMIS question. But I I will take it from the PAMIS side. I know that for some of the countries, once uh, zoos priority target uh, areas are identified, um, there are sometimes no often actually publication that are following afterwards but it's true that it's still quite uh late in terms of of when uh this uh, analysis has been performed so i hear your point it's just about like how we can better share those types of information to inform respective strategies especially when relevant for bordering areas um, I guess it's a question for the global community. I mean, because for me, it's about uh, having also uh, countries, respective re representatives agreeing on sharing on sharing that. Now I think on, on sharing such data. Now I I hear you too, and I think I also hear the request that can that can go to the DTFCC like coordinating entity, meaning once available and if available and shared, for instance, with us, can we get this agreement and try to find a way where we could uh, 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 share this information? I, I think it's a good um, it's a good it's a good flag. It's a good point, a broader point than that. Uh, you ha may have seen on our website. Once we get the agreement, we usually publish the NCPs that are being finalized. And I think your point is quite relevant and, and definitely something to keep in mind and try to see how we can move this forward. I I can't, for me, I mean, it's pretty impossible to provide an answer now because it does request also like engagement and agreements from, from, from many different actors on this piece. But I think it's an excellent flag and something we should look at and try to see how we can better share this kind of information. I don't know if someone from my team want to add something. And yeah, there is another hand I think I can see. Yes, just, just a remark from speaking. Um, I'm wondering if the Colera regional platform uh, that have been up and running for a couple of years now, are uh, exactly the place where you, you mentioned that you, you, you can load information, not only the NCPs, but it were, it, 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 in my, if I remember for what purpose it has been done, it was to share essentially the document about NCPs or hotspot mapping or information on a risk factor or cholera action plan, things like that before on the, the, the global roadmap. So I'm, I'm wondering if that kind of cholera regional platform that have been used in uh, West and East Africa are still up and running uh, and could be used for that purpose because it was uh, the, this question of how to share the information is not from today, is uh, more than a decade that this is, this is discussed across countries because of the cross-border um, mm -hmm. aspect of cholera. So I'm, I'm, I'm just opening, I don't know the status of this uh, platform or... I don't know if uh, Philippe or Morgan have, can add something on, the, on, the, on those platforms and, and what can be expected from that side, basically. Uh, I'm sure you're happy that I'm throwing you the ball, but just because I I, I can't answer to that because I'm not sure. I know I, I I and I think it's a good point, a fair point that you're raising, Bertrand. But those those regional platforms, I'm quite unable to say right now in my position, meaning not expert of that, uh, if they could be used for that. I see how we have a role to play in terms of dissemination of this type of, of information. Now I think your point is like how we do we leverage the already existing mechanism. Philippe, you want to say something on that or not really? 
Yeah, no, it's it's an open question. So uh, uh, we will have some some discussion also tomorrow on the global and uh, regional surveillance. So uh, it's it's of course linked to uh, so the the uh, so it's an open question. It's not closed. It's not finished. But uh, whether I have a clear answer to provide today, the answer mm -hmm. is no. So uh, uh, Barry, us we'll talk about that tomorrow. Yeah, I, I've taken notes on those things. It's, it's also the purpose of the discussion. Huh? This discussion is not just a presentation of facts. It's really like to brainstorm and identify this kind of thing. So thanks for raising the different plan, uh, points. I think if we're good with that, I'd like to just spend a few minutes on the second and third points because I know time is flying. Um, so, and 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 just to 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 finish, sorry, on the first one. I don't know how, but I think another item action I see uh, from our side is to try to follow up and 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 have this this mapping basically of potential existing future support being to be provided. So a double mapping, sorry, a mapping of countries that potentially plan to engage in the PAMI revision within the 12 coming months. We have already a few information, but trying to gather that largely have also this feedback coming from partners and then see how again in terms of information sharing we can we can we can reshare that more broadly so we make sure that we coordinate the respective efforts and support to be provided i'll move quickly to the second axis and basically it's another open question another one for brain for brainstorming purposes right um it's a question of setting up a GTSCC review process. So I'll have just to say a few words uh, to explain why we bring that to the table. For now, um, countries get, so countries who are going through the priority areas identification can benefit from some support from partners or any type of support really. And, as we mentioned, it's one of the first phases in, the, in an NCP development. And then basically there will be technical support provided almost up to the end of the development of an NCP. And the kind of ultimate step is having this document submitted to the independent review panel for to have it endorsed and kind of like, not kind of endorsed basically by the GTSCC. This was a proposed to facilitate many of the following steps to ensure first the quality of the and, and harmonized aspect of the NCPs that are being developed and allow then to access many also of the support for it for the, the, the set of activities to be implement, implemented further on. My point and where I'm trying to, 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 to go right now is it means that sometimes as part of this global endorsement process, the priority area exercise that has been performed can be questioned during the IAP process. And it may arrive, it may come very late in the process. So the question to everybody here is, both countries and partners really, would you see an interest in having um, GTFCC PAMI review process being set up, meaning the idea would be everything has to be designed and nothing is being agreed upon or anything. It's just really to brainstorm and, 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 and get your views on that. Meaning, for instance, when a country has reached, he is benefiting from some technical support. When he reaches the step of having his hotspots uh, uh, stabilized, he can get, for instance, the views of a group of experts just to kind of have final thoughts in terms of how aligned this is with the GTSCC methodology. So again, I'm not super precise in what I'm saying because really this is kind of like just trying to gauge your interest and understand if this is something that we 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 should looking we should be looking at. And 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 I'll link that to, to, to another piece, but really would like to have your thoughts regarding that. And maybe if I've not been precise enough, Morgan, please feel free to add anything on, on top of what I've just said. Now I just have silence. So I hope we're not sleeping because of what I just said. 
and I don't see the room entirely, so I'm not sure if anyone is is like having. Okay, thank you. We try for Kenya. We could try for Kenya. Yes, go also, ahead. Uh, so for Kenya, you know, we are outbreaks occur in the context of uh, a regional uh, uh, kind of picture uh, with. Um, challenges in all the countries, in most of the countries in the Horn of Africa. Mm. And uh, it, also, it also occurs around uh, the context of humanitarian emergencies, drought, which has now been followed by floods. Now, we in, in Kenya, we've done the hotspot mapping, which are now the PAMIs. But the question is, those hotspots are not the same across the country. There are different contextual factors in each of the hotspots. So for us, one of the areas we would think would be useful if uh, for supporting is how to identify the contextual factors in each of those hotspots, and then select that will also form the benchmark against which we uh, follow our future progress. And then uh, target our interventions both based on those contextual factors. So we would be amenable to support towards that end. Um, the other aspect, this year we implemented OCV for the first time mm -hmm. in Kenya. So we would also be amenable to support towards evaluating the impact of the same and uh, also in terms of uh, further deployment based on the uh, assessments that are conducted now. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Okunga. That's, uh, that's, that's very clear and good to hear from, from Kenya because it's true that you do have an extensive experience on many, many fronts actually to share. So I think it's, it's, it's well noted. Um, I know it's late, so I just want to check if there are any other points on that. I realize this is not like an easy question to answer, but it's really something that we have identified as a potential challenge. The idea is not to have like a final, a final review being, I mean, a final, basically what we don't want is to have the IRP come at the end of the NCP process development and have comments to share on the hotspot mapping that is a cornerstone of the entire strategy. And we could have had that earlier in, in the process. Morgan, do you see anyone else? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, yes, I'm yeah. kind of, I have blinds. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's Cameroon. Thank you for the presentation. You just mentioned Cameroon is in process of revising the national control plan, the cholera plan, but we have also started elaborating the roadmap. The history is that the national control plan was developed before the OSPOT exercise, which was conducted in 2021. So now the revision is to integrate the result. But based also on the different orientation and the support of WHO and other partners, we have started developing the roadmap and we have also started conducting the elimination process, which the first step is the engagement of the government, which was obtained in last year in November during the International Forum on Public Health Emergency Management. Now, the question, since Cameroon still have many regions, many outbreaks since 2021, we have like uh, five regions over 10 in the countries continue to face outbreak. We, are, we have now more than 15,000 cases. So to, based on the different uh, definition, it's a bit difficult to start discussing elimination when the control process is not well developed or engaged. So how are we going to manage it in the country? We have the engagement of the, but the multiple sectoral, the government for elimination process, but 
we are still we still have many regions running outbreaks and in the other hand we are developing we are revising the national control plan cholera plan we are in the process of developing the roadmap we are in the processes of elimination i think it's a bit it's too much for the country and that's why at the time we start something we don't we don't go to the end because the epidemiologic situation then we are, it is a kind of staying without moving without seeing the result of what is going on thank you yeah thanks for that i think managing very many competing priorities is like a true a true flag and and something that does impact the type of activities being implemented is there anyone who wants to take on to take that question and comment on that okay okay Je pense que ça, c'est l'exemple parfait de, 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 de uh, situation. L'objectif n'est pas de résoudre... Ah oui, merci. Non, non, merci. L'objectif n'est pas de résoudre tous les problèmes immédiatement. Alors ça, ça serait l'idéal. <rire> on sait tous qu'on n'est pas dans un monde idéal. Donc l'objectif, c'est vraiment d'identifier où sont les zones qui sont les plus prioritaires qui ont donc le plus de chances aussi d'être la source d'épidémies qui vont, qui vont affecter les autres districts. Et puis après, on fait une révision. Et puis après, euh, donc c'est vraiment aussi le, le, le plan national choléra, il doit aussi euh, inclure euh, aussi une approche progressive. Euh, quand on est dans un pays qui est fortement endémique euh, ou qui est simplement endémique, hein, c'est le cas de, de, de beaucoup d'autres pays, évidemment, que l'approche ne peut pas être la même que dans un pays où il reste que quelques foyers, même s'ils sont réguliers, où là, effectivement, on est sur, sur le, 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 la voie de l'élimination. Donc, l'approche, elle doit être euh, progressive et pragmatique. Et c'est pour ça que, que euh, euh, cette priorisation, euh, de mettre plus de moyens dans des endroits où ils auront plus d'impact, c'est ça qui est, le plus, euh, qui est le plus important et qui risque aussi enfin, d'avoir de, de, le plus de résultats. Puis après, ben, au bout d'un an ou deux, on peut faire une révision puis voir comment est-ce que les choses elles évoluent, etc. Donc tout ça, et tout ça, on améliore en même temps la surveillance parce qu'on sait aussi que ben, la surveillance... Euh, euh, L'évaluation, elle n'est pas toujours, euh, elle est faite avec des données qui ne sont pas toujours parfaites. Hein, euh, euh, donc voilà, c'est vraiment cette idée de. de euh, c'est pour ça que les, les, le, 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 les plans de contrôle nationaux du choléra, ce n'est pas un plan national, enfin, c'est un plan national de contrôle du choléra, mais ce n'est pas une approche nationale avec tous les districts, toutes les zones de santé qui sont traitées de la même façon. Donc, c'est vraiment tout le but de l'exercice de priorisation et avec, euh, avec aussi des choses qu'on sait. Je reprends l'exemple de l'Ouganda où, effectivement, ben, il y a eu des vaccinations dans des zones très prioritaires. Euh, il n'y a pas eu de nouvelles épidémies. Par contre, eh ben, il y a eu des épidémies à côté. Voilà. Donc, et ça, ce n'est pas un échec. C'est ça qu'il faut aussi anticiper. En revanche, d'améliorer la surveillance aussi dans d'autres endroits, c'est ça qui va permettre de détecter plus tôt, de répondre plus tôt, d'éviter un, une flambée, une, 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 que, que l'épidémie se propage à d'autres zones. Donc, c'est vraiment en travaillant sur, sur les deux choses. Mais je pense que c'est vraiment le message, ce n'est pas mission impossible. Et c'est pour ça que alors c'est toujours difficile de prioriser parce que... Ben, on aimerait bien tous avoir les moyens, mais on sait qu'on ne les aura pas. Donc, voilà, où est-ce que ça aura le plus d'impact Avec les données qui sont disponibles, sachant qu'elles ne sont pas parfaites, et puis après, on réajuste. En tout cas, merci pour votre question. Thank you. I know it's like 4.55, so we won't be able to cover everything. And I, I'm just noticing in the slide that there was one thing that was not clear because the expected outcome was repeated twice. So sorry for that. But anyway, I think I'll just close with one, with one sentence because we won't have to go through the final point that still is really critical about discussing basically the next steps, meaning how 
how we take it from there when once the PAMIs are identified. We've had a very good first example with Lucy, who presented uh, all of the work that is being done in coordination with the with the, between the OCB working group and, and, and the surveillance working group. But of course, those are questions for all of the pillars. And I'm pretty sure we'll, and I hope we'll have time and other opportunities to discuss that over the coming days. But this is a, a flag, something I think Elizabeth said it very well a bit earlier today, meaning that we are well aware that there are gaps in terms of guidance, in terms of how we can identify activities to be implemented in these priority areas, and that will require another prioritization in each of the priority area. So just to flag that this is something we are aware of something that we will have to address as a global community. So sorry for not having more time to discuss that now. 